Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we are going to discuss the last subject in this course. Uh, this is uh, related to uh, induction and energy transfer. Okay. Uh, look at this uh, figure here. We have a rail, the blue one, which has a resistance R. I'm going to put the resistance here, R, of this rail. Okay. And then we have a rod, this black one, of length L. And I'm moving it, I'm applying a force, F applied, moving it uh, to the right, through the, uh, uh, I mean on this rail. We, uh, um, we assume that there's no friction here uh, at the end of the, uh, when the rail is touching this, when the, when the rod is touching the rail, we, um, we, um, we assume that there are no friction there, okay? So we are moving, as we apply the force, this rail is going to move at constant speed. We'll see, uh, we will see why, okay? Now, uh, remember that this, uh, there's an external magnetic field. I can write here external, so that it make it clear for you that this is the external. It can be produced by a bar magnet, but it is constant, okay? B, external in this one, is constant. It's not changing at all, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm increasing the... Now I'm moving this rail, this rod, to the right. I'm increasing the area here. So there's an increasing flux. So phi B is... Increasing in this case, okay? If I move it to the left, the, fi the flux, the area will decrease, the area uh, will decrease, this area here, close area here, will decrease, and the flux will decrease. But here, the flux is increasing because A is increasing. Not because B is increasing, okay? B is constant in this problem. So if A is increasing, the miss it means that there, is a, there will be an, an, uh, an induced uh, current an induced EMF, an induced magnetic field, okay? Can you tell me, my son, what is the direction of the induced uh, magnetic field? Since phi B is increasing, the induced magnetic field, I'm going to draw it here, will be opposite to this one. It will, come, it will be coming out. That's B induced. Once I get B induced, can you tell me the direction now of the current induced? Remember, my son, your fingers with, the, with B, and the current will be with the thumb, you put the thumb here, which means going up here, to the left, down, to the right here. So this is my I induced, I induced, okay? And then you can draw the EMF induced if you want, okay? So there will be a current here, I, going up, and you have a velocity, I mean speed, to the right. Uh, so if you have now a current, in a magnetic field, there will be a force on this rod. Okay? Force, Fb, magnetic force, which is I, Lb. Remember this? B external, of course. Eh? There will be external here. There will be a force. What is the direction of that force, the magnetic force? Look, my son, eh? your fingers now with the current, which is up here. B is external, is inside, so the force will be to the left. So there will be a magnetic force in this direction. F. Magnetic. Fb. Fb. This Fb here, okay? That's Fb there. And since Fb, okay? Since this is moving at constant speed, then Fb and F applied, let me make them the same, same size, so that we can tell that they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Fb and F. Up. So F applied, in this case, since V is constant, I'm, I, I want to move it uh, I don't want to accelerate it. I, want, I don't want to put a lot of efforts. I'm going to put it, I'm going to move it at constant speed, okay? Otherwise, my, my F applied will be larger and I, my work I have to do will be larger and so on. So I want to move it at constant speed, okay? In this case, F, B should be equal to F applied. The two forces are equal. Uh, and uh, that's, If this is larger than this, there will be acceleration. If it is larger than this, there will be acceleration. So if I'm moving at constant speed, it means the two forces are equal in magnitude. And they are, they are opposite in direction, as you can see here. Okay? So F applied is actually I, L, B. B external, I, I, have to, I don't want to be brought external here, but you know this is the B external. Okay? As long as I'm moving, there's a current. If my rod is not moving, if my rod is not moving, there will be no current. Because there will be no change in flux. Now the flux is changing because I'm moving the rod, I'm increasing the area, and I'm, I, I have the induced current, the induced uh, magnetic field, and so on. 
Okay. Now let's now. Uh, so I have this apply f applied. Okay. Now let's go to uh, uh, Faraday's law now. So my uh, uh, Faraday's law. This is Faraday's law. Let's write down here Faraday's law. It gives you the, the magnitude of the EMF is d phi over dt. Here we have only one. Let's imagine we have only one uh, coil. My coil is made one, one turn, so one here. There is no minus sign because I'm talking about magnitude. And d phi over dt is b dot a. Uh, now uh, the angle. A cosine of the angle is either 0 or 180, so I don't care about it because I'm taking magnitude is equal to 1. So if uh, B is constant, it goes out of the integration, and dA over dt is this what we have, okay? Now, since B is constant, we take it out of the differentiation, not the integration, as, as mentioned in the video. It is a differentiation. It will be D, uh, B, dA over dt. So this has to be, co co the, the integration has to be changed into differentiation. This is the differentiation, not an integration. B is constant, okay? Takes it out of the integration, and we have dA over dt, where A is the, this area here. The area is actually L, L, the length of this rod, times x, which is changing, okay? So my EMF is B, uh, d over dt of Lx. That's the area. Now remember that L is constant, the rod, but S is changing, so I'm going to take L outside. So it will be BL dx over dt. What is the time rate of change of, the, of this length here? Actually, it's V. That's the dx over dt, time rate of change of, of the, of the, dist, of the dis, distance or displacement is velocity, okay, or speed. So this, is, this here actually is V. So my EMF now will be BLV. That's Faraday's law. So if we, if we know the magnetic field, the external, we know the length, and we know how uh, the speed we are moving this rod, we can find the EMF in volt, okay? That's the EMF. Uh, I can also find the induced current, okay? By using what? By using Ohm's law. I can find the induced current. I induced is actually the EMF over uh, the resistance of the wire, right? So, what is the EMF? Is BLV over R, which is the resistance. That's the induced current. So, if I, know the, uh, if I know the resistance, I can find the induced current. I can also find the power dissipated in this, in this, uh, in this circuit here. Huh? The power dissipated. Okay? The power dissipated in the circuit, in the resistance, okay? Or in the wire, okay? Dissipated in the wire as heat. It appears at here as heat huh? in, in the resistance. What will be the power? Power will be I squared times R. That's a very well known uh, equation. Okay? So I'm going to, to square this, multiply by R, and get the power. So it will be uh, B L V over R, over all of it squared times R. Okay? So it will be B squared, L squared, V squared over R. That's the power dissipated in the resistance of the wire, okay? Now I'm going to uh, uh, find the power uh, applied by the applied force, okay? Power due to the applied force. Due to the applied force. My applied force, I'm going to move it, I'm going to do work. And, uh, and the time rate of change of the work is actually the power. And that power there is F applied times V. Again, review your... It's a very well-known equation, okay? So F applied is here. So it will be I, L, B times what? Times V, okay? That's the, that's the F applied. F applied times V. This is the F applied. And F applied, actually the current is the induced current, so I'm going to write this, uh, put this one here, okay? So my power will be, I will be what? B L V over R, that's I, and then I have, I have L B times V, okay? So it, will be, it, it, be, it becomes what? L squared, B squared, L squared, V squared over R. What, is, what do you notice, my son? Very important. What do you notice? Okay, let me write it down here. B squared, L squared, V squared over R. You'll notice that the power applied 
by the, the power due to the applied force is exactly equal to the power dissipated in the resistance, conservation of energy. So um, whatever power I'm doing to move this rod, it appears as heat, as thermal energy in the resistance. This is uh, energy, what we call the energy transfer. So energy is transferred from me by, by moving this rod to the, to the resistance of the wire, which, which is dissipated as heat. Okay, this is, this is the last uh, concept we will discuss in this course, the, the, the power dissipation. Uh, in, in, uh, so let's write down this statement here, important statement, so we can write that the work done, the work done, the work done to pull the, the rod, okay, the work done to pull the rod uh, of length R, uh, of length, of length L, this rod has a length L, L is the length of the rod, remember, wherever you see the L, that's the length of the rod, eh? of length, rod of length L, appears as thermal energy in the resistance of the wire. Okay, your uh, your circuit or the resistance of the of the of the let's say the loop is better than maybe uh, it's going not to not, not confuse things. Okay, so is is equal, is equal to the the length the work done to pull the rod of length L appears as thermal energy in the resistance of the wire of the loop. You can see it here. Eh? The power dissipated the power due to the applied force is equal to the power dissipate in the resistance. That's the, the idea of conservation of energy. Of course, we assume that there's no friction here uh, 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 between the rod and the rail, the blue rail here, okay? I think this is, uh, this is the end of, uh, of the concepts in this course. I hope, my son, you will enjoy this course. I hope you will benefit from it. Uh, and this is not a replacement to your lectures. You have to read the textbook, you have to solve problems. We are solving some examples for you here, just to give you a hint how to uh, proceed. But uh, it's not enough. This, this vid these videos are not enough for you to, uh, to grab the, 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 the concepts, and you have to do it practice. You have to practice, you have to at attend the lectures, attend with your instructors, and if it is to be very nice if you can look at the videos before going to the lecture so that you can benefit more, uh, and vice versa is also correct. You can attend the lectures, whatever concepts you did not get them, uh, uh, you didn't get, grab them uh, completely, you can look at the video. I hope you will enjoy them, and we will, we, will, we will look forward for your comments, useful comments. Thank you.